Welcome, my friends. You're listening to The Voice of the Eternal Gospel, a program brought to you by the Eternal Gospel Ministry, founded in 1992 by Seventh-day Adventist believers. This is a Christian program dedicated to bring you the prophetic fulfillment, warning, and revelations of the end times, and to promote the advancement of Christ in your life. Welcome, my friends, to The Voice of the Eternal Gospel. I'm Pastor Rafael Perez, and inviting you to pray with us. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you again for giving us this great privilege to study that word. Help us, O oh Lord, that as we uh, go through all these prophecies, that we can always see the mighty power from you trying to save each one of us. Help us, O oh Lord, and send us your Holy Spirit. So we not only come to know the truth, but to live according to this truth. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Well, we, um, I believe that one of the most controversial prophecies in the Bible, from the Reformation, from the time of the Reformation until today, is these prophecies that we've been presenting on Revelation 13. Revelation 13. And why did I say that? Because um, it is very well known that we have been reading this, that the dragon or Satan has been trying to deceive, if it's possible, the whole world, even the, the, even the very elect. So, um, and we have been going over Revelation 13 in the last few programs, and I know I always like to remind the people that we posted, we post not only this TV programs, but national radio program in our website address, eternalgospel.com, and, um, and there is a reason why I say that, because I know that most of these presentations can be misunderstood, misrepresented people are um, it's easy it's easier for any religious leader say oh don't pay attention to those programs because those programs are divisive okay bringing division in our community in our churches it's easy to say don't listen I, I like to, I like to know the origin of who brings division because sometimes the devil brings division sometimes it's not the devil bringing division Jesus even talks about bringing division in a home. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's important for us to realize that, that Jesus, through the Word, the Word of God, can also bring division. Yeah, well, Matthew chapter 10, talk about that too. Mm -hmm. now, now that you bring this up, and, and I'm glad that, you, uh, that you're helping with this, helping me, because <laughs> as you know, I know most right. people don't right. know this, mm -hmm. if there is a person in this earth that have gone through harsh, harsh, uh, some problem just because I accepted the truth is me. I mean, you know, I, w I wasn't born and raised as many of you, you know, in, in the gospel. I was born and raised into a, a home that I, I used to say uh, that my parents were even more Catholic or, you know, even from, even than the Pope. You know, that, that's how it was. Was that in the United States? No, that was in the Dominican Republic, where I was born. Mm -hmm. And uh, and of course, I don't want to make this program uh, me as the, because who am I? I'm just a little dust. Mm -hmm. But yes, many people wonder and they ask, they say, why you seem to be so passionate when you talk about this? And they have to understand my background. I know what it is to be deceived. I know what it is to be living in a religious experience, thinking that we were, I was following Christ, thinking that I was being obedient to Christ, thinking that I was going to be a minister of Christ by just, let's say, trying to become a Roman Catholic priest or praying the rosary every day or going to Mass every day or participating with the Mass every day. I know what it is. So, obviously, the more I come to the understanding 
of this message is so the I, true gospel, the more burden I feel in my heart to share this truth with the people. Yes. So how did God lead for you to get from Dominican Republic in a Catholic family, the Catholic, most Catholic family, to the present truth here in Florida? Oh my, my. <laughs> That's a long story. But to make a long story short, maybe, and, and by the way, I was, we were not planning to do this uh, because I know that the topic today, we still, we want to finish up Revelation 13, okay? And since we have seen in that chapter so many, um, how can I say, Satan is trying to do miracles. But you know what? God is a God of miracles too. Mm -hmm. Our love, Lord and Savior, Jesus is a Lord of self. Miracle. I came here to North America. My father was already here. Uh, and so now my older, my, as a matter of fact, my oldest brother was here. We spent about 12 years in the Catholic seminary too. And here so did I was. You come to move here? No, I came to visit when my parents uh -huh. were here. And all of a sudden, uh, for the first time in my life, I was able to come across what I used to call heretics. Oh, heretic, heretics? Mm -hmm. You know, the Protestant. To me, I'm talking about 35 years, almost 40 years ago, anyone who was not in the Catholic and the mother, what they call, people call it mother church, uh, were, to me, they were dangerous. They were, I should not be associating, and much less to talk about the Bible to them, with them. But God on his mercy, as while I came to, you know, see where my father was living in North America, um, sent a, you know, a, a young man to my life. And that young man, he said, before you go back to your country, if you decide to go back, I want to share with you something that I have found in the Bible. It was about all this truth, the truth of the Sabbath, the truth, you know, the the truth of, of, of this two power of Revelation 13. Wow. Yes, I'm sorry. Now, were you studying to be a priest at that time? Well, when my parents were sending me to a seminary to prepare to be a priest uh, for almost five years. And, uh, of course, when I came here and I make all this discovery, one of my, I believe that my, my worst, my tough, the most tough decision in my life was to tell my mom, especially my mom, that I wasn't going, going to, I was not going back again, that I, I decided to stay here in America. And then, uh, and of course, after that we went to another institution uh, to study theology, keep studying, because I always want to be I always have been, want to be in the student of the Bible. The only difference was, there is a difference, and, and I want to reach out to priests and to everybody out there, even evangelicals, even Seventh-day Adventists. There is a difference when you study the Bible, being attached to an institution, or study the Bible because you want to be attached to Christ. Amen. There is a difference. And it's true. by God's grace, I make my decision to study the Bible because I want to be part of Jesus' church, Jesus' people. You know, uh, Jesus, oh God always have had, have had a, a, a group of people in this earth to follow Him, despite of uh, any opposition. So again, making it long story short, I make the decision then, not to go back to my country, but to go to another institution to study theology uh, in a more free way. Uh, you know, I was able to take the Greek, to take Hebrew, and, and go through the Bible and, 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 say, and see for my own, in my own, you know, through the Holy Spirit, what was the truth. And, 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 you know, the rest is history, I guess. Can you expand a little bit about that young man who came and shared with you? What, what things you saw that... that um... Wow. You, you put him in the... Because I'm very emotional. Uh -huh. 
You know, this human, he came with pamphlets in the Bible. That's why I'm so into media, radio, television. I do believe, and the devil knows also about the power of the media. Because when this young man came with the Bible on his hand and studies like we put together, saying, I want you to see with the Bible. You know, for instance, one of the things that he showed me, he said, do you know that Jesus prohibited anyone to call another human being in a spiritual sense, Father? Man, to me, that was such a shock. Sh Shocking, because I, I didn't know about that. In Matthew 23, it says very clearly. Mm -hmm. When this young man said, wow, a spiritual sense, do not call anyone father. And here I was pretending to become a father one day, spiritually speaking. You know, and, and I was wrong, obviously. Because the Bible, Jesus said, do not call father. And of course, in the seminary, they argue, they say, but how do you call to your biological Father, daddy, right? Mm -hmm. But it's a difference between Jesus was talking in the, in the spiritual sense. Another thing, maybe so on, he starts sharing with me. Oh, another thing that impressed me, because I was a normal young man. When he showed to me, he says, do you want to be a minister? Do you want to be a priest? You know, do you know that a minister must be married to a woman? Boy, I, I like that. I said, what? And I, I, I remember looking into my Catholic Bible. Mm -hmm. And yes, indeed. Paul speak about it, that if you want to be a, if a minister, a minister must be, it should be a, 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 a married to a woman. Isn't that what the Bible says? It, it's, it's a, I mean, so clearly. So here we go, more and more. He told me, he showed to me, Luke 4, 16. He says, look. Jesus kept the Sabbath. Jesus going to church on Sabbath. To me, that was so impressive. I never heard of that such a thing hmm. before in my life. So every all those things went on, and, and he went on, and, and not only Luke 4, 16, he explained to me how even after the resurrection, the same writer, non-Jew, Luke, a, a Greek man, a Gentile, he spoke about the seven-day Sabbath as the commandment of God. So he went on to me. He, he even showed me Daniel 7.25. Oh, wow. 7.25. Where he says, you know, there was, there was, it was prophesied that it was going to come. Daniel, 600 years before Christ, already saw this system coming that would think to change times and law. But let's hold it right there because we are coming to this little break, and we'll be right back. Paul and Jesus both predict that the Church of God becomes a force against God. The radical faith that Jesus taught had become the official religion of the empire that murdered him. The speed with which the early church tobogganed into apostasy will take your breath away. Welcome back. So were there any other things that you saw in that, that study at that time? And that study that this young man was giving, presented yeah. to me. You see, yeah, he went, it was, I remember, he took me from like 11 o'clock one evening, a Saturday evening, to a 6 o'clock the next day. Wow. The whole night we, we spent with me. Let me ask you a question, though. Yeah. Because and the more question is, he was presented to me, the more evidence he was showing to me in the Bible, more convinced I was that evening 
that I have been deceived. Wow. Okay. So the reason why I'm asking, and many of my family members been deceived. The reason why I'm asking is because some things you said should be confirmed, because of what you're saying is so clear, so important as a personal testimony, but also as a witness to the truth of the scriptures. For instance, you said the uh, the, the bishop supposed to be the, uh, a priest should get married, mm -hmm. right? And the Bible tells us over in Titus one uh, seven, it says, "If any man be blameless, the husband of one wife." Mm -hmm. Having faithful children, not accused mm -hmm. of riotous mm -hmm. or unruly, mm -hmm. for the bishop must be blameless as a steward of God, not self-willed, no, not soon angry, not given to wine, nor a striker, not mm -hmm. given to filthy lucre. Mm -hmm. Okay, but it shows very clearly that the bishop is to be what the husband uh, of yeah. one wife, uh, one wife yeah. showing that uh, it's important that the man, that a, a priest should be married or a minister should be married. Amen. All right. And uh, and then the Bible says, whosoever find a wife, find a favor with God. Amen. And also, I think a lot of the pedophilia and homosexuality that's been seen in some of the, some of the things we've read in newspapers over the years could have been could be avoided. But you mm -hmm. see, when people are not following the scriptures, right, all type of immoralities can occur, mm -hmm. especially when people are in the dark about what is truth from right. the Word of God. Yeah, and in Matthew twenty three nine mm -hmm. that I mentioned before. That, that you can find it. It says right there. It says, and, and call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father mm -hmm. which is in heaven. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think right. it, even a child can understand that. Then you, then you brought the other thing about Luke 4, 16. Mm -hmm. That deals with the Bible Sabbath. Mm -hmm. The know, seven day Sabbath. The seven day yeah. Sabbath. Because mm -hmm. it says here, dealing with that point, it said, and it, and it says, and he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. Mm -hmm. And as his custom was, this was mm -hmm. Jesus' custom, right. he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and mm -hmm. stood up for to read. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says that, so the Bible says Jesus kept the Sabbath. Yeah. And, and, and of course, I'm sorry. And Jesus was, and you know, the question is, was the Sabbath for Jews? Let me put it this way. The Sabbath was also what Jesus kept. So okay. Jesus Jesus is the creator of all things. Yeah, and, and by the way, when people say that, that Jesus was a Jew, I say, well, you know what? He is my savior. He was the one who, who was nailed on the cross for me. He was not a pope, not a minister, not a church. Yes, it was Jesus. So I prefer to follow Jesus because he is my savior. Amen. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And as of today, um, and, and sadly, I can say, I do have cousins, second cousins in the priesthood. Uh, one of my most dear aunt, uh, she's still a, a, a nun. And of course, you know, when you love so much your family uh, and you have to talk about separation, talk about bringing, you know, uh, that how the gospel, uh, Jesus said it, I didn't bring peace, but you know, the vision even in family members. I know what it is. I know what it is when family members, you know, have been calling me the black sheep of the family, you know, and so on. But you know what? What I always said is this. It's better to be the black, sort of called the black sheep of the family, but to be in the side of Jesus mm -hmm. instead of being, you know, in the side of men just because of popularity. Uh, yeah. We, I ask you one question yeah. while you were looking at it. Did you notice any change? Did your friend, when you were learning this, did you learn anything about the difference in the Ten Commandments? Like the commandments that were written by the Bible versus the commandments that were given by the catechism? Of course, I, I, had, I still have my catechism uh -huh. with me where it was different. Uh -huh. Even in, in my, for my surprise, it was different, the catechism, even from the Catholic Bible. Because the Catholic really? Bible, you look at the Ten Commandments, it, it says the Fourth Commandment in, in the Bible, it says the Seventh Day Sabbath. It is even more clear than even in the King James. Mm. Uh, okay? But when you go to the Catechism, that's when the, you see the change. And this young man showed it to me. But not only showed that to me, he showed Daniel 7.25. He says, you know, and I saw a clear, a clear dis description. He said, about this system that would have come that would think to change you know God's law Times and to, to me it was such a I mean it took me you heard my testimony before it took me only one night that night the first day the first day ever in my life that I meet that I was able to sit down with somebody who was not a priest to 
to study the Bible, and I understood it so. I mean, to me, it was it was like I don't consider myself like a super intelligent man or whatever. I was a very young man, of course, at that time. But even at my younger age, I was able to distinguish between the deception that I've been, and most of my family was been or have been. But I praise God. I should say that, you know, be, before my mother went to sleep, by God's grace, she understood this truth. And, but, but she even had to ask forgiving to me because for so many years she fought me. She argued with me. She wanted me to go back again to my country, go back again to the seminary. You know, she, she, she was a very strong Roman Catholic lady. Mm. So I love the Roman Catholic friends out there. I love the evangelical friend out there. I love everybody. Mm. And because of that love that I got, that's the reason, the same opportunity that Jesus gave me, I know Jesus has given it to us all to come to the, you know, there is a special, there is a difference, I always say this now, there is a difference between truth and a special truth for this time. Mm -hmm. And God has a special truth for the same time, which is the first annual message, the second annual message, and the third annual message. Another thing that impressed me, <laughs> I remember, just like now, that's why we put it in this, at the end, this one. This young man brought a, a, a literature like this also, with a woman having a golden cup on her hands, Revelation 17. When he read Revelation 17 to me, I told him right there, I said, you don't have to tell me anymore. You don't have to tell me anymore. Because a woman, he went over with me in the book of Ephesians, the book of Jeremiah, Isaiah, it's being represented as a church. So, wow. When he came to Revelation 17 with me, almost around five o'clock in the morning, after spending the whole evening, and, and I saw that picture, I said, the Bible is the word of God. All this prophecy have been come to pass. But guess what? I was right there in the midst of the, right in the belly, but I didn't know that. Wow. And I went home that morning, little be, remember, I did, we didn't sleep the whole night. We went home that, that day. My biggest burden was how I'm going to share this. First with my loved ones, and second with all my friends. Uh, I remember I, I took a whole bunch of literature like this and sent it to my friends to the seminary. You know, booklets, studies. And one of the priests, he answered my letter, but instead of addressing the letter to me, he addressed the letter to my mother. He says, please, take your son to this closest psychiatric, psychiatric institution in, in there, in North America, because I think he has gone crazy. My answer that I gave was, yes, I'm crazy for the Lord. Yes, I'm crazy for the, I'm crazy for the Bible now. Hmm. I'm crazy for the Word of God. And until today, yes, I can say I'm crazy for, for the Lord. I love my Lord so much that I prefer to obey Him rather than men. And this is not an a, a easy path, as you can imagine. You know, uh, people, a lot of ridicules start coming, you know. Uh, praise God that some of my family members throughout the years, they've been able to see this truth and they've been coming, enjoying this movement. Because God's people is not a denomination. It's not a church. God's people is a movement. Yeah. A movement that uh, uh, bringing souls into the kingdom of Christ. Mm -hmm. Isn't, isn't that what, what the gospel is all about? You know, bringing you know, people to get them ready to be living in heaven. We read, in pre Pastor Barry read in previous program, uh, how in the new earth, we're going to be coming on the seventh day Sabbath before our heavenly father before the throne. Well, my question is, why not starting today then? Yeah. Isn't that what the Bible says? Mm -hmm. You know, why wait until we go there? As a matter of fact, if we know all this truth, after we come to the knowledge of the truth and we disobey God, all the Bible says, 
a, a condemnation will come to us. We cannot be found in the book of life. That means we're going to go into eternal perdition. Isn't it? But anyway, uh, <laughs> do you want to go by now to Revelation 13, 18? Well, about there, the number? There is a verse in Matthew 10, 34. Jesus said, okay. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. Mm -hmm. I am not come to send peace, but a sword. So, so, what does that mean? So that means the truth can divide. It's not Satan that divides all the right. time. The truth itself. Yeah, I, I, another, uh, I remember just like now, one of my counselors, a priest, I, I said to him, I was sharing about the, you know, the fourth commandment, remember, the Bible said, remember. This minister told me, this poor man, he says, but Raphael, forget about it. And I said, I look at him, I said, Jesus says, remember? You said, forget it. <laughs> Who should I believe, you know? Yeah. Who should I follow? <laughs> Obviously. And the same thing I, I tell, you know, our friends out there. Your ministers, your churches, I want to say, forget about it. Remember, remember this. God says, remember when it's talking about the fourth commandment. Who are we going to believe? Uh, Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, he says in the book of Acts chapter 5, verse 29, it's better to obey, we'd rather obey God instead of man. Isn't it? Yes. Exodus 20, verse 8. Uh, Remember the Sabbath day okay. to keep it holy. So I need to conclude with this. Uh, I'm sorry, maybe this was this was not part of, of the script about talking a little bit about my testimony today, but uh, I really want to encourage all of you there to seek the Lord just following His Word, mm. His message for this end time. May God bless us all. Our Voice of the Eternal Gospel family thanks you for joining us. Generous contributors like you keep us broadcasting. Prayerfully consider supporting this ministry. Donations are tax deductible and can be sent to Voice of the Eternal Gospel, P.O. Box 15138, West Palm Beach, Florida, 33416. Our phone number is 1-866-7th-DAY-2. That's 1-866-784-3292. And our web address is voiceoftheeternalgospel.com. Find out what the critics are raving about. Top scholars and theologians from around the country come together to reveal the hidden history of the book of Revelation. With powerful reenactments and incredible visual effects, this 95-minute masterpiece brings to life the book of Revelation like never before. Revelation is no longer a mystery. Get your copy today. <laughs>